originally I just grew them as a hobby. I would get them at uh, the local stores, uh, the varieties, and uh, I would have them and then I would lose a variety and I'd go back and they wouldn't have the, that variety. So uh, my mom and dad uh, saw in the paper there was a local dahlia show in Ann Arbor. Uh, Lil and I and uh, and my mom and dad went to this local Dahlia show and I said this is for me. I was a manager at a department at uh, University of Michigan and uh, I had this hobby on the side and uh, one of the fellows at uh, in-house at uh, U of M was a vendor at the Ann Arbor market so I would bring the flowers in at, uh, when they would bloom in the fall. I'd bring them in, share them with uh, different secretaries and departments. And uh, he walked by this gentleman uh, and said, you should take those to the Ann Arbor Market. And I, probably about three years later, I kind of took it more serious. And that was the beginning of it, was selling cut flowers there, which now I sell the plants and the roots at certain times of the year. And also uh, do ornamentals. I do some hanging baskets and such. So I needed uh, product to carry me for the full year at the market. The latest is the hoop house, to growing vegetables which was new to me. We had a victory garden when I was a kid at home and uh, I had that always in the back of my mind uh, thinking about it and uh, but it was it was very nice that I got reports from uh, from Adam Montre and David Connor about the uh, timing of when you plant certain varieties of uh, vegetables and I started out with greens and uh, tomatoes and eggplant and, and uh, peppers and various things until now I, I just this year I cut back to uh, some cut flowers uh, some specialty cucumbers uh, tomatoes and uh, some herbs thing and some green beans I, try to simplify it a little bit. It starts in the spring when when you uh, start seeding in February uh, your spinach and and lettuce and then we're harvesting by about before the first of April and, and luckily enough we have the Ann Arbor market which is open year-round. Tom is clearly the oldest farmer in this project as well. I thought, I don't know if he's going to be able to keep up on these things. I don't know if he's going to be in there, you know, planting and weeding and harvesting and, and doing all these things. And, you know, I'm really glad to say that I was completely wrong on that and that Tom has done a great job. And I think what, what he's shown is that, um, and we've heard this from some of the other farmers in the project who have other products, that his dahlias sell his vegetables and his vegetables sell his dahlias. So he's got something, I mean, when you go to the, the farmer's market and look at Tom's stand, it's these, I mean, he's got dahlias from this size to this size. To, I mean, he's got these beautiful, beautiful flowers that really draw your attention. And it's like, you go and you get the flowers and then it's like, oh, and he's got vegetables too. So you, you know, you, we see a lot, going there we see customers doing those things. And we also see people who go to him for vegetables and then they get the dahlias. So he's got this really nice, you know, cut flower um, specialty market and this vegetable market. And I think for him that's worked really well. I look at the market at different vendors there, just much like a shopping mall. There's the big stores and there's the small stores and the specialty stores. And it's like the the just the the group of those together make an attraction for the customers. In the 90s, I go out early morning, late evening. So I do my watering. Uh, it's covered, so it needs supplemental water. It doesn't get it from rain, so 
uh, I've been watering about it almost every day for the last week. Uh, especially when crops are young, you need to keep the beds moist. I don't use any chemical sprays. Uh, I use uh, organic fertilizers, including compost. Uh, I've had a terrific weed battle, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Uh, like when I first started, I, I got some from another source that wasn't all leaf mulch. Uh, if you're going to do this, you, if you have all leaf mulch, you're going to have less seeds in it. Sometimes I have other people do like my tomato starts. Cause it, merely because I'm, I pot up about, I pot up in their fairly large pots, six inch pots, about a thousand dahlias in the spring. And uh, so that takes up a lot of room and most of that goes in my garden, the rest is for sale or for trade or however. Uh, and then I do the baskets and such. It's merely because of space. I get 42 plants in a in a bed. Uh, the beds go up crossways in a uh, four foot on center. And uh, so there's, I get a flat of 48 tomato plants and I plant most of them in one bed. And the reason uh, beans are good is they put the nitrogen back in. So that's a good, uh, it's almost like a cover crop where you're getting a, a product out of it. So, uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll put beans in an area where I've grown, say, tomatoes for a couple of years or better, you know, the following year, because I do eight, I have 21 beds total, and I do eight beds of tomatoes, eight varieties. Uh, I went with Elliott's Coleman's uh, formula, which is rock phosphate, green sand, and cottonseed meal. So I mix equal parts and I add it to the beds, uh, especially some, especially to make the heavy feeders. I started growing the, some Asian greens, and they're a little more warmer than like spinach and lettuce. They're like tatsoi and bok choy. I got a lot of uh, beetle damage with those, but not with. I don't get any damage with any of my lettuce or uh, or spinach, and I don't treat it at all. The only thing I've used out there was some neem oil. Too many critters around here, and that's one thing that the hoop house uh, has an advantage. Uh, I put a little, uh, somewhat of a fence on each roll-up side so that they, uh, the deer can't come in. And once in a while, I'll accidentally leave a, I have a uh, door on each end. And if I leave one open, there was a small fawn in there this spring. With rabbits and woodchucks, uh, this year, no problem. And what they, what they eat, I find, are beans when they get up to the two leaf stage, they get two or three inches high and they'll eat them down to little pegs. But I, I got lucky. Even though there were rabbits in the hoop, hoop house, I chased some out. Uh, well, the other thing is maybe moles get in there. I keep my tomatoes up until late October, which is stretching it for new plants. But I tried it about mid to late September is when I plant probably three beds of spinach. Spinach is all I try to winter over. Most other things will bolt. Uh, so I found that spinach will not bolt. Uh, I can carry it through and when I put the third supplementary cover over that's uh, on the, it's about 38 inches high and that's pulled over during the winter the ground doesn't freeze. And what happens is so when the snow load gets and falls on the side and it gets up there about five feet on each side, 
it tends to insulate it. Uh, the heat during the day kind of melts it back. You can look down there and see where it's melted it back an inch or two. When it's brand new and slides off the roof, there's some weight problems there, but we, the, the unit I have is, uh, is pretty solid. Uh, it's two and a half inch uh, pipe, so it's uh, meant to uh, hold the snow loads as they have in the upper peninsula. What we see with farm, farms a lot is that they, you know, not only do you not have this winter income to pay bills and other things that you're paying out of your summer income, but then come February, March, you know, you're buying, January, February, March, you're buying seeds, you might be hiring labor, um, and you have that for maybe two or three or four months before you start to have an income again. So you're, again, you're putting out more money um, to operate your business without bringing any money in. But if we can continue to bring that money in, we can hopefully lower those downtimes of not having a lot of cash flow and trying to you know, get, a, get a good amount of cash together to be able to get that started up in the season again, early in the spring. The greens are the big items in which people at, in the spring of the year, you know, in March and April, uh, at the market, they they now know that they're they're more than just myself that have this uh, growing technique. That that product's available: spinach, mixed lettuce, and uh, Ann Arbor is a is a conscious town uh, about uh, foodstuffs. Now I do a mixed leaf lettuce, and then what I'll do is I'll plant maybe a bed of. Uh, Mizuna, a bed of endive, uh, a bed of mixed lettuce, a couple beds of uh, black seed Simpson, uh, harvest it all in tubs and then we mix it all. And so I might have one mix with, with Mizuna and endive this for a few weeks and then next week we got baby spinach in there with, with it also. You learn to pay attention to the varieties regardless of what plant it is uh, rather than the family it's in. And uh, the truth is, is I was in a waiting room in a doctor's office and I read, I was reading a magazine there and it had this excellent salad mix. Mizuna endive and lettuce. And so that's where I came up with that. I just lucked into it, I guess. Yeah, I try to tell them what I'm doing there when I when I do do a mix of such greens and uh, if it's different this week from the last week, I get a lot of repeat customers, a lot of them. So, uh, you know, oh, Dale, we'll try that. And so, one thing that I have learned from a hoop house is uh, growing greens especially uh, is that the texture of the leaf is different than if you grew it outside. It's a, a very soft texture because it doesn't get exposed to wind that much so it, it's a soft texture. You want to grow at least two crops per year out of, out of a bed. I learned a bit because I would uh, I would uh, do my totals on what the income is out of a bed, and there's certainly crops uh, that give you more dollars per square foot than other crops. Uh, one is like radishes. The only reason I grow a crop of radishes is, is the timing. I can plant them real early, I've got the space, and it's a draw to my stand. I'm the first one that has radishes at the market, so uh, that's the only reason I plant radishes there. Other than, and it's it's nice to have variety. Tomatoes are the winners. Yeah, and lettuce. If you're cut and come again, lettuce and spinach. Uh, it's a little more. We do it where we wash it and dry it and bag it. So uh, 
it's not like a field crop it's it's handled like a finished product where the customer can take it home and eat it I've only been in this for four years so uh, I found when I take beans to the market they, they I don't come back with any so in the back of my mind I'm trying to grow what the people want.